So one of the most common questions we get in the comments of these videos and emails and social media is, are you going to become a German citizen? And, well... Hi, we're Ashton and Jonathan. And along with our son Jack, we're the Black Forest family. Living in Germany since 2013, follow us along on our weekly adventures of living, working, and raising a family abroad all the while building our dream house in the Black Forest. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today's video, we wanted to cover something that's kind of popping up in the news again with the new German government, and that's German citizenship. So we wanted to cover what the current regulations are for becoming a German citizen, Plus, what are the restrictions for having dual citizenship, dual passports? Yeah, so like Jonathan mentioned, the new German coalition government, under the leadership of Olaf Scholz, has recently announced they're interested in reinstating dual citizenship. So we thought it would be really fun that if in today's video, we actually talked through with you what those plans actually look like. Yeah, so obviously this is very interesting, and for us, do we even qualify for this? Yeah, and ultimately, by having dual citizenship in both the United States and in Germany, what would it mean for us? So in today's video, we're going to be covering all of those topics. And if you're interested in learning more, as usual, we've written an entire blog post on this subject, and you can find that link down in the description below. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I think the best place to start with this video would be just to simply talk about what the current regulations are if you're interested in becoming a German citizen. So generally speaking, and I realize there are some exceptions to this, but people from most countries will have to give up citizenship of their home country if they want to become German citizens. Uh, this is a process called naturalization. Now, in addition to giving up your nationality or your citizenship from your previous country, you also have to meet some pretty restrictive guidelines. Let's go over a couple of them now. So for starters, to be eligible for naturalization, a person is going to have to have lived legally in Germany for at least eight years and possess the appropriate residence permit called a Niederlassungserlaubnis. That is, unless you complete an integration course, which would shorten the time to just seven years. Or if you're a spouse of a German citizen, this is actually shortened to just three years. In addition, you of course must declare your allegiance to the German constitution, have sufficient command of the German language, which is going to be at least a B1 level. You also must be familiar with the legal system, society, and living conditions in the Federal Republic of Germany by taking a naturalization test. Just very quickly, this is a 33 question exam where three of those questions are actually going to apply only to the German state which you are living in. So for us, that would be Baden-Württemberg. You have to choose the correct answer for some multiple choice questions. And to pass, you have to get at least 17 of those questions correct. In addition to the naturalization exam, you're also going to need to be able to support yourself without resources to social assistance, and last but not least, have a clean criminal record. And you know, speaking of this criminal record and having a clean criminal record in Germany, I can ironically actually attest to this a little bit. Um, here in just two weeks, I'm actually submitting my dissertation to the Prüfungsamt at the university to finish up my PhD. 
And in addition to printing out a ton of copies of my dissertation and filling out a mountain of paperwork in a very proper German fashion, um, I actually also had to prove that I had a clean criminal record. But um, for your peace of mind, I am not an international woman of mystery. Um, I, I don't run any criminal enterprises. I'm not that exciting of a person. Uh, I, I have no criminal record in Deutschland. So. Bit of a sigh of relief. I know, it kept you up at night, didn't it? The name's Bond, James Bond. So if you've been watching any of our videos so far, you would know I've been living in Germany now since June-ish, 2013? Yeah, 2013 Weird. sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. So nine years this year. Oh, geez. So I actually qualify for the German residence part of this to become a German citizen. And actually, interesting enough, although I've only been legally living in Germany since July of 2018, I actually would qualify as well for German citizenship. According to Section 10, Paragraph 2 of the Nationality Act, spouses who are not yet eligible for naturalization and minor children may apply for naturalization along with their eligible spouse or parent. Effectively, this law allows for German citizenship to be acquired by an entire family together at once. Now granted, I would still need to meet all of the other requirements to gain German citizenship, including my language proficiency, taking the naturalization test, as well as hopefully keeping my clean criminal record. Okay guys, so in today's video, it's obvious that we're chatting with you about what it takes to become a German citizen. And one of the more significant steps to reaching that goal is getting your B1 language certificate. And if you've seen any of our previous videos, you're probably aware of the fact that for the last about a month now, Jonathan and I have been working towards a 60 day challenge where we take 60 German classes in 60 days. And we're doing this for a couple of pretty important reasons. I mean, obviously we're building a house and we're wanting to put down more permanent roots in Germany. But even more important than that is as we actually build our family in Germany, speaking German is going to become such a foundational piece for us for really the rest of our lives. So it's important that we make an effort to really invest in our language learning. So for 2022, we'd like for you to join us in what's really a pretty remarkable challenge. One that will transform you from just simple small talk to having real conversations. So for starters, you can take what's called the Sprint Challenge. And this means you're gonna be taking 15 classes a month for two months for a total of 30 classes. And if you're able to complete this and you don't miss any of your classes, you will get back half of what you paid. Or for the very adventurous, you can take on what's called the Super Sprint Challenge. This is when you take 30 classes a month for two months, effectively 60 classes in 60 days, just like Jonathan and I are doing. And if you attend all of those classes, you complete it in full, they'll give you 100% cash back. But because you guys have been following along on our language learning journey, we have something special to offer you. So click the link down below in the description or use the voucher Jonathan2022 to take off 20 euros or $25 from the deposit. And guys, Lingoda offers classes not only in German, but also English, Business English, Spanish, and French. So I guess consider joining us this new year by challenging yourself in learning a new foreign language. And who knows, if you're actually interested in learning German or improving your German language skills, uh, you might just see two very familiar, albeit probably slightly confused, uh, faces in your next class. We hope you join us, guys. It's been super rewarding yeah. thus far. Okay, so next up are the current exemptions as of January 2022 for allowing you to hold a dual citizenship in Germany. Yeah, so like we mentioned at the very beginning of this video, for the most part, for the majority of countries out there, you're probably going to have to actually renounce your citizenship to your home country 
before actually becoming eligible for German citizenship. However, there are actually some pretty noticeable exemptions to this rule, again, as it applies as of January 2022, when we're filming this video. Okay, so first, you could have dual citizenship from birth. You could have a parent who's German, and then you could have another parent who's non-German. So your father could be German, your mother could be from Canada, and you are already on a path for having dual passports. Second, you could be born in the European Union, or you could be a Swiss citizen. And technically, this does allow you to get a second passport. And last but not least, you can actually qualify for dual citizenship if you come from a country that does not allow you to renounce your citizenship. In fact, there are 17 countries in total. Hold on, they don't let you leave? No, like if you have, technically, I think, I'm fairly certain, but if you have um, citizenship from a select number of countries, you're actually not allowed to just renounce your citizenship in order to take up citizenship in another country. You're a citizen and you're stuck for life. I mean, there are probably some exemptions to this rule, but specifically to take up German citizenship, no, you're not allowed to. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, it's an easy path to dual passports, <laughs> I guess, but... But I feel like it's probably worth mentioning, um, the United States is not on this list. So as it stands today... January 2022. January 2022, um, we would actually have to renounce our American citizenship in order to become German citizens. So interestingly, there's actually a less talked about loophole that Jack technically qualifies for. Yeah, so this is sort of a funny story. Um, we found out after the fact that apparently there is a law in Germany that stipulates that any child born after the year 2000 to long-term residents of Germany who are non-German citizens their child could actually qualify for German citizenship if they're born in Germany. Um, however, long-term citizens by their standards is eight years of residency. And when Jack was born in November of 2020, Jonathan had been here for seven and a half. So ironically, at the time of his birth, Jack did not qualify for German citizenship. We actually got a letter in the mail. They specifically told us he does not. However, as of today, because Jonathan has been here now for over eight years, he does qualify for citizenship. So if we really wanted to, we could actually go down to the Rathaus and submit applications for him to become a German citizen. So effectively, Jack can technically have dual citizenship right now. He can have a German passport, an American passport, mm up until the age 23. Once he's 23, he has to decide, do I want to be a German citizen? Do I want to be an American citizen? Yeah, I actually found that to be super interesting. Um, in Jack's specific scenario right now, um, his dual citizenship wouldn't be for life. Like he mentioned, you're actually going to have to choose. And specifically, there are actually going to be a couple of scenarios that could happen in his life that would actually force his hand. For example, if Jack decides that he wants to enlist in the military, whether that's the American military or the German military, simply by doing so, he must renounce allegiance to the opposite country, which like, I guess kind of makes sense, makes right? Sense. Yeah, yeah, like if you're gonna fight for one country, yeah, you yeah. can't still hold allegiance to the other. And you know, thankfully, while the United States and Germany have a very friendly relationship, I can see why how in the past, um, that there would have been wouldn't go over so well. There would have been a conflict of interest, yeah. I guess you could say. And you know, similarly, um, this doesn't actually apply to Jonathan or I. We aren't affiliated with a government agency or work, the U.S. military. I work with a bicycle company. Yeah, but because there are so many Americans, specifically who do come to Germany and are affiliated with either the DoD, the military, or any other branch of American government, we feel like this is probably still worth mentioning it is highly unlikely that you will qualify for dual citizenship in Germany. Um, to qualify for dual citizenship, you actually have to hold a Niederlassungserlaubnis or a permanent settlement permit. In addition, you have to pay German taxes, German social contributions. You have to contribute to that side of society in Germany. And as many of you probably know, by working for the American government, 
although while stationed in Germany, you're actually precluded from claiming the foreign exemption on your taxes. You have to pay American taxes. You don't pay German taxes. And so just based on this bureaucratic rule alone, it's unlikely that you would qualify for dual citizenship. Yeah, you need to naturalize into Germany. Okay, so next up on our list is actually a pretty exciting development that has just recently taken place over the last few weeks. And that is actually that Germany is now actually considering offering dual citizenship to a much wider immigrant audience. Yeah, so presenting its plans on the new governing of Germany, the coalition of center-left Social Democrat Party, the environmentalist Green Party, and the pro-business Free Democratic Party announced that they were planning to drop the requirement of giving up the previous citizenship in order for one to become a German citizen. And I feel like this is very important to note. This is just a plan. It has not been passed yet. However, the coalition government has given us some hints on what this could potentially look like in the very near future. So we thought it would be really helpful and informative, not just for you, but for us. Yeah, it's totally sparked our interest. So. Yeah, absolutely. That we actually provide you with some context on what this would ultimately look like. So here are some of the changes you could potentially anticipate. So first, immigrants to the country may have to wait for shorter periods of time before applying for German citizenship, as the new government is looking into possibility of enabling them to apply for citizenship after only five years in the country. In addition, the agreement between the three coalition parties also foresees speeding up and simplifying asylum and residency applications. Now, what this ultimately means, we don't really quite know yet. Again, this is something that's a plan, but not a current law. But what many political scientists anticipate is that we could see things like shorter waiting times for those who have graduated from a German university and are gainfully employed by a German employer. But at this time, we can really just only speculate. Um, hopefully, if this is something that qualifies you to get it faster, and by that time, I've actually finished my PhD. Who knows? Good news for you. Yeah, good news yeah. for me. Maybe I'll actually qualify again. So I don't know. It's just sort of a wait and see thing at this time, but it's something that's really exciting. And ultimately, I think this discussion kind of leads us to what would having dual citizenship in both the United States and in Germany actually mean for our family? And this is a conversation that we've actually had a lot in depth recently because, you know, living abroad as an immigrant family is extremely rewarding in so many ways, but it's also tough sometimes. And for us, that usually comes in the fact that our families are kind of split. Um, I think we've mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, we're really thankful that right now, both of our parents are happy and healthy, but in the future, if they ever really needed us, you know, we like keeping our American citizenship for that idea that if we needed to just pack up everything and go home, we could we could do it. I mean, it's it's so hard to kind of anticipate what the future holds for you. And I think that's part of what motivates us to still keep our American citizenship is we don't know what's going to happen in 15 years. And that might mean moving back to the United States at some point. Yeah, I mean, we have no problem like maintaining our United States citizenship, like our entire family, except for Jack is there. Yeah. But but, you know, again, on the flip side of that, because we've been living in Germany for so long, you're, you're here for almost nine years now. Yeah, And when I moved here, this thought never crossed my mind. Yeah. But now that we have Jack, we suddenly have this question of, what is Jack going to think he is? Is he going to associate himself as a German or from the United States? Yeah. And, and the longer we stay here, the more roots we put down in Germany specifically. So for us, when we look forward to retirement, it's 
Every year we're here, every year we pay into the German pension system, every year we spend becoming more and more integrated into this culture and this society, it becomes more realistic that this might be the place that we retire. So having dual citizenship for us on just a most fundamental level would mean that we would still be able to go home and take care of our family if, if we ever needed to for a very long period of time. But then we would also be able to still keep a tie here in Germany and retire someday. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the problem with my Niederlassungserlaubnis. If I leave Germany for a certain period of time, I mean, my visa is gone. If we wanted to come back to Germany to retire, I mean, that's not really a very easy thing because I need to have a company sponsoring my visa yeah. and start this process over again. So the thought of retiring in Germany after living in the United States again is really not going to happen. Yeah, so that's one of the real benefits for us in having dual citizenship is that it, it just leaves more opportunities open for us. Yeah, and I think it's also really important to point out how lucky and fortunate we are to yeah. have potentially the possibility of maintaining citizenship in the oh, United States absolutely. and in Germany. Like that's it's not something we take for granted. This isn't just something that we're like, oh, great, that's so nice. Like, I think for us, like this is a very special unique thing. Yeah. And again, the, the longer that Jack lives here, the more roots that he puts down here, the more that also motivates us as his parents, I think, yeah. to also want to be connected to Germany because Germany will be such a significant thing for him in his yeah. life. We want him to feel at home. So that's why we're taking so many language classes again to become yeah. better, to work with his friends and his friends' families and make him feel like he's at home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the other major benefit for us to have dual citizenship is probably a pretty obvious one. Um, if you saw even the introduction to this video, you know that we recently bought a house. We're building a house in the Black Forest currently and having dual citizenship and specifically being a citizen of Germany would really allow us to participate in the democratic process. Now, I'm the first to admit, I probably should follow more of the like national politics a little bit better. But for me, I feel like as a, as a parent, as a citizen, I have a duty to participate in just even like the small local government processes. So for example, in the future, if our new township government makes or is thinking about making some decision on like changes to Jack's school or building a new education facility, or if they're putting in some sort of new road or transportation that could affect our house and our property value. Yeah, we kind of want to say in that. Yeah, exactly. I think just the ability to participate in just our local government, our local processes and having a real voice I, I think is something that we would really love to have. So currently we have no say in what's happening around us. No. We just have to you know, go with the flow and then that's our life. Yeah, no, granted, we can still obviously go to public hearings and vocalize our opinion. But when it comes down to decision making and that ultimately being a vote, we, we don't really have one right now. Yeah, because our voice is also not that great because our German is not C1 level. But right? it's, it's getting better. It's getting better. We're getting better. Much better. All right, guys. So fun fact, in this vlog, um, in 2020, less than 1,000 Americans became German citizens. So who knows? 2022, there might be just two more. Yeah, and we'll be sure to keep you updated if anything changes with our nationality and citizenship rest assured, we're gonna take you along with us on that process. Yeah, we're gonna keep a close eye on whether this goes through or not. And as always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, we would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, Miss Bob. Cheers.